we do forecasting of disease evolution, so predicting how the patient will evolve in the near-term future so that you can take action based on that. Welcome to Startup Health TV, where we celebrate the entrepreneurs and innovators who are transforming health. I'm Logan Plaster. We're here at the Alzheimer's Association International Conference in Philadelphia, and I'm here with Christian Dansereau, the CEO and co-founder of Perceive AI. Christian, great to see you. Pleasure to be here, Logan. Conference Thank going you. well so far? Very well, very productive meetings, super interesting conference. Uh, it's one of the big ones in Alzheimer's disease, so very glad to be here. So Perceive AI has an interesting take on Alzheimer's. We've talked to folks who are uh, detecting, uh, looking at the brain and finding the, the plaque, finding the damage. Folks who are predicting, hey, you're gonna have Alzheimer's in 10 years, we think. But you're working on something a little different, the prognosis, the trajectory. So tell us a little bit about what that is. Exactly. So we do forecasting of disease evolution. So predicting how the patient will evolve in the near term future so that you can take action based on that. Uh, let's say in oncology to just have a sideline a little bit like it, when you get a diagnostic, you also get a prognosis. So you have your life expectancy mm -hmm. or some sorts of idea of the risk profile of that individual and how what's going to be next, right? Which is uh, in Alzheimer's disease, a question that most patients will ask is, okay, I have a diagnostic now, what's next for me, doctor? Yeah. Like when I'm going to be very impaired, where I'm going to cross that line of dementia uh, and what kind of support do I need? So that's a big one. Yeah. And so is this a tool primarily for those patients and give them what they need or is it more for industry and understanding how to create therapies. So that's the beauty of it. It's for both actually. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's definitely helpful for the physician to take action right away instead of doing what they are currently doing, which is watchful waiting to see the progression of the disease to be confident in the diagnosis and, and in the intervention. So it can speed things up for people that would miss the optimal treatment window. And on the clinical trial side, it can be very useful to tease out a bit the the, the, the variance or the how patients are actually find the right patient essentially for the clinical trials. You okay. want to have people that will decline cognitively to show that the drug is actually working on these individuals. And you may recruit a lot of people currently that are stable during the duration of the trial without treatment. So okay. these individuals will not be able to show benefit from the drug. Um, what were some of the challenges um, that kept people from doing this work before, obviously using artificial intelligence, machine learning. Um, are we able to do things now we just couldn't do a few years ago in terms of crunching the data? Yeah, so there is a, the size of the data that we have, the longitudinal aspect of it that we are now having at scale. Uh, and then there is the deepness of the information that we are collecting on these patients. So you have a richness of pieces of information that looks at different uh, angles on the disease that are very important for the prognosis. And uh, so now we have that kind of information and we can provide that like near term prediction of how those patients will evolve in the next two years. Okay. And that can be obviously very useful for clinical trials to yeah. optimize and accelerate them. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of news about Alzheimer's therapies that have come to market. Yeah. Very cool it's, news. It's been yeah. a big few months. Yeah. How does that play into what you're doing at Perceive? Yeah, so our starting point is to de-risk and accelerate clinical trials. So we are started there before there was any therapies on the, on the clinical side. Now that there is uh, therapies on the clinical side, it opens the door for assisting physician into that time year diagnosis, making sure that we get these patients on treatment at the right time earlier is actually better for the outcome of these patients. Okay. So it's important that wow. we uh, support them and make sure that they are diagnosed at that time. So how is that changing the response to your company at meetings like this? Well, I mean, uh, there is a gamut of things that we can now do with the same kind of tools and the same platform. So that's very exciting for us to see all the avenues and, and different application of what we've built. Uh, so are, are you getting a different vibe? I mean, are people more excited about? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Perceived? I mean, so you're talking to different people, right? The, on the pharma side, but there is the clinical people on the clinical side, on the drug develop, uh, deployment side, and there is a the drug development side. So there are completely two different groups of people. So it's okay. just like uh, another, uh, another set of individuals and with their different concerns uh, that you're talking to, and obviously more clinicians as well, given that the clinical side is... So important. the story you're telling me is sort of like building momentum, we're at an inflection point, we've got the therapies, the acceptance is growing. What are some of the biggest hurdles 
that you face with Perceive AI and kind of what do you see as the in industry unlocks? Like if this yeah. organization would just do blank, we could really bring this to market faster. I mean, on the clinical trial side, it's statu quo. So people are, it's a uh, clinical trials and pharma is a slow moving ship and uh, they are used to do things in a certain way, uh, bring new ways or new approach to uh, make things more efficient and faster is very attractive, but also they are very careful into adopting anything that is a change out of their comfort zone. So this is difficult to bring that to market and convince them. Uh, but this is coming we are seeing a shift uh, on that front. And on the clinical side, it's really a question of infrastructure. There is a lack of infrastructure on the neuro side in terms of diagnostics, supporting the physician, like the, the, the assessments uh, in the Break clinic. that down for me. So yeah. like neurology offices don't have certain equipment? Well, we are coming in with these new drugs. You're coming in with a lot more information that is required to get to a diagnosis. You have biomarkers, imaging, you have during the treatment, you have multiple safety MRIs to do. So you have a lot of things that you need to collect and to aggregate and yeah. centralize. And currently there is not much to uh, support that. It's okay. a very cumbersome process uh, and doing it at scale with a lot of patient is difficult. And that's why we need an infrastructure to support that. Yeah. Uh, Do you see any groups coming in and being the infrastructure player? So we are building a platform you are. Okay. Uh, on top of, uh, of the algorithms that we've developed to actually deploy these algorithms, but also support the day-to-day -day patient management of these patients to provide that initial infrastructure. Nice. Yeah. Okay, I, I didn't know that, so I wasn't, I wasn't <laughs> leading into that. Um, it, it feels like there are so many solutions bubbling to the surface right now. It makes sense to me that the infrastructure side would be a big hurdle. How do you knit this all together? How does the neurologist manage all this 12 streams of data? Yeah, so our proposal is really, really to centralize that in a single place. So our platform is multimodal. It's geared towards, it's patient centric and it's geared towards um, monitoring that patient in the longitudinal yeah. uh, treatment of the patient. And so you need to collect and aggregate that information in a single place, especially during treatment, so that they have that kind of snapshot view of the patient and they can switch from one patient to the other and really see the status, where they are in their treatment, if there is any complication or anything, and they can quickly assess the information that no, is there. I love it. It makes sense that yours would be that longitudinal platform because you are measuring and you are, you know, it, yeah. you're creating a trend line so the idea that you would be there for them throughout the trend line makes some logical sense to me. Exactly. Like you need to have that underlying data to yeah. provide the insight that we're bringing with the uh, predictive tools, right? Yeah. So supporting that was kind of a given, given that there is unfortunately no alternative on the platform and data collection side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Christian, thank you for giving me an update. I hope it's an awesome meeting here at AAIC and we'll be watching you for the next 12 months and see what comes next. Thank you so much, Logan. All right.